I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. For the next several weeks, we're going to be interviewing people who live in the St. George area. We're really excited about meeting them and hearing their stories. And so we're going to uh, first hear from Misty Amet. <laughs> appreciate you coming and sharing your story. How Thanks long have you been me. in St. George? Um, I'm going to say almost 30 years. Wow. <laughs> so you're, you've seen a lot of growth down mm -hmm. here, haven't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've watched it over the last many years, and it's amazing. Yeah, That's so beautiful. thanks thanks for coming and sharing. <laughs> so you were, were you born LDS? Mm -hmm. Where were you yep. born? Um, Salt Lake City. Okay, and you lived there. Did you go to school there? Uh, we moved to Bountiful when I was six. Oh. So went from first grade through high school yeah. up in Bountiful. A Bountiful Brave, were you? I went to <laughs> its cross. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I don't know their mascot. Right? Wildcats. Wildcats. <laughs> so uh, born in the church, were mm -hmm. your folks and members? And, uh -huh, very yeah. active. Okay. Very active family. So you went to primary and mm -hmm. did yep. learned all the songs and everything. Yeah. And I had callings when I was a teenager. Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the young women's mm -hmm. and stuff. Yep. Did you ever go to camp? I did. Yeah. In fact, I was camp. a camp leader. Went oh, through yeah. all my four or five years of camp and then stayed and oh, was and a leader. And helped the young, mm -hmm. young women. Yep. Those were always neat. And they were always religiously oriented in the sense of the bishop brick would come up, didn't they? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and share, and then you'd have testimony meetings yeah. and stuff. And <laughs> yeah. So do you feel like you had a testimony of the church? I never did, honestly. Did I you ever bear did. it, testimony? I, like at these camps and stuff? I don't remember doing it at camp, but at church I did once in a while. Yeah. I felt like I was supposed to. <laughs> it just, just kind of went through the motions mm -hmm. then? Oh, yeah. But not really... Believing. No, I I am the oldest of five children, okay. and so I had to set the example, and so there was just always that pressure. And <laughs> um, so when I turned eight years old, I was expected to get baptized and stuff. Sure. And I honestly remember um, you got you got baptized on a Saturday, and then you got right. confirmed into the church the next day on and Sunday. Got the Holy Ghost on yeah. Sunday, yeah. Yeah, and I remember very very distinctly. I had gotten baptized, and then we left the church to go to my aunt's house, and she lived about 45 minutes away. Mm. So we were driving, and I remember thinking, we are going to get in a car accident, and we are all going to die because of me, because I lied, and I said that I believed, and I got baptized, and I just felt like God was going to damn me to hell right then and there. I, I, I remember that. Isn't I remember that, that at eight years old. The pressure that that puts on you, yeah. and knowing that you, when you say you lied, you mean you just, they asked you, do you believe the church is true, and, mm -hmm. and you, well, what do you know at eight years old anyway, yeah. but. Yeah, I just, I, I kept telling myself, well, maybe after I get the Holy Ghost, then everything will be okay. <laughs> and then the next day, they had all the men put their hands on my head, and my dad was saying the prayer, and I remember when he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, somebody like shook my head. And I just remember feeling like, that was not the Holy Ghost, that was someone. <laughs> somebody moving their hand. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I, I just felt like the worst person in the world, because I just felt like. Just a disappointment to God and yeah, to, earth, to yourself I did. and everything. I did. Oh, that's and too I bad. didn't tell a soul, not yeah. a soul. It is interesting that we baptize, we, but the church baptizes at age eight. Really, you think of baptism as accepting Jesus and, and his following him as, as, as our example. And what do we know and do at eight years old? Yeah. It's, it's a little early, I yeah. think, or not really. I was 
grateful to be baptized later when I could make that choice. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so you go to high school there, and, and, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then and what happens after cross. that? Well, um, then oh, did you take seminary? Oh yeah, that's another story. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I went and I just I tried and tried and tried to just to study. I especially remember when I was when we were reading. It was either the Book of Mormon or the Doctrine and Covenants, but I believe it was the Book of Mormon. Yeah. I remember <laughs> thinking, <laughs> I read this last year. I re I remember reading this in the Old Testament, and I I just was looking like at the two sets of books and going, this is so similar. Like how, if this was given by the prophets, and why would it be the same? And I. I, you know, I mean, it was slightly different because it yeah. was plagiarized, but I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> right. And I remember just asking my my parents to just explain it to me, and they were always telling me, "You need to quit asking questions like that." You were just too inquisitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is funny that the the Book of Mormon has current or well, seventeen hundred kind of. King's English as it, mm. oh, as yeah. it is, you yeah. know. In, <laughs> I didn't think about think, that back then. Nephites yeah. <laughs> writing the same as yeah. King James and stuff. And all that. Yeah, that is funny. Mm -hmm. So you just so seminary wasn't a I a tried. highlight either, but yeah, tried to have a testimony of of the church and Joseph Smith. I mean, that's what we're expected to have and mm -hmm. read the Book of Mormon and pray about it and yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. What anything else happened in high school and um, your time frame? Well, really, my story started when I was three years old. Um, my dad is a pedophile, and he sexually molested me. Um, it's my very first memory of my whole life, and I know I was three because my little brother was a baby. I'm so sorry. And no, it's <laughs> it's what led me to God. Is it? So and I your, and your dad's has been or is? He's still a Mormon. Well, but I mean, he's spent time in. Oh yeah, he went to prison. Prison yeah. for, for this, so we're not yeah. kind of talking too much out of no, no. school it's, or anything. But, no. oh, that's too bad. And he, so that was the first memory, that's sad. My very first it? memory, yeah. Did that, did that impact you too at baptism then maybe? Well, did yeah. Did people know at that point? No, no. Oh, so no. so were, you were carrying that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. So yeah, he had been molesting me, and then as I got a little bit older, he started with some of my girlfriends. Oh and my um, he would kind of choose the girls who didn't have dads at home. Hmm. And the story he always told me was that this is what dads do with their little girls. And you don't talk about it. Every dad does this to their little girl. Oh my goodness. And so it, he had to take it upon himself to molest my friends because they didn't, because have, they didn't have dads, dads at home. And so that was just the story, and mm. you this know. is an accomplished person to, <laughs> yeah. to do that. That's too yeah. bad. So you carried that into high school. When, mm -hmm. when did it um, end for you? So when I was 15 years old, um, I caught him in bed with my little sister, mm. and I just my heart just sunk. And um, my my dad always made it that so that my mom and I weren't very close. That was kind of his plan, was just to not, to make sure that we didn't have a great relationship because he didn't want me to say anything. Um, but yeah, sure. my little sister and my mom were best friends. Uh -huh. And so my little sister had told my mom. And then my mom didn't want to believe it, but yeah. she finally asked me, and then that's when everything kind of came out. Wow. But, um, and you being the oldest, was that a... Uh, sometimes that's an additional pressure because you feel like you should be protecting <laughs> yeah. your brothers well, and sisters. Well, that was part know. of it too. Yeah, yeah, because when I started my period and I would have to wear protection, sure. my dad would feel, oh, she's on her period, and then he'd go molest my little sister. Oh boy. So then I was like, oh good, I'm going to be on my period every day, and I would just <laughs> wear protection every single day. Fair. And then he would get mad and he'd go beat up my brothers. Oh boy. So that was a huge weight, you know. So now you said that this helped bring you to God. Was that immediate? No, no. After high school, um, my mom stayed with my dad um, throughout oh, she his. Did. Yeah, she stayed with him throughout his prison sentence, and I, I see just because of her belief system that she had to because they were married in the temple and their marriage was eternal and. She would always she didn't say, want to break those covenants. Mm -hmm. and, you know. She always had this fear that she wasn't going to be. She would always tell me, 
if I'm not sealed, then I'll I'll only be an angel, and I don't want to be an angel. And so she was she would you, stay with me. Even if it was that situation, she wanted to hang in there for yeah. the celestial kingdom. Yeah, isn't it funny how, or not funny, but how the religion plays such an important part in in our crazy thinking yeah. sometimes. Yeah, she would beat me up. Oh, and oh gosh. She would have my brother beat me up, and it was just a really, really bad situation. Tough life. Yeah. So did so. you eventually got out of that? Uh-huh. So happened um, I ended up um, getting a scholarship to Dixie College, and yeah. I applied That's in Cedar at Dixie. City? This is it? here in St. George. Oh, in St. oh sure yeah. it is. What am I thinking <laughs> about? <that? laughs> I wanted to get yeah. as far away from my family as I could yeah. without paying out-of-state tuition. <laughs> right. So I ended up at Dixie, and um, finally I was free. I didn't have to be a Mormon anymore. I could finally just be who I thought I was. Yeah. And just from all the, just the anger that was built inside me. My dad was writing me letters from prison, blaming me. My mom was beating me up, blaming me. My grandma was blaming me. Like I had broken up the whole family. Oh, Misty, that's just terrible. And so <laughs> I finally just told God, because backing up, when I was a little kid, I would just pray and pray and pray for the the abuse to stop, and it sure. never did. And I would pray that like my dad would like fall down the stairs and break both his legs, or the, you know, I would just pray all these prayers, like God, just please, like yeah. make this stop. And it never stopped. And so finally, by the time I was 18 years old, I was so mad at God. Yeah. I just said, you know what? I don't believe you anymore. I don't. You didn't never believe in me, and I don't believe in you. So and so that was it. Became atheist so for a I, while. I did. I became atheist, agnostic. Yeah. I would make fun. I mean, I was a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> I would really just, you know, just I just, it was not a good time. Oh. So, but I thought it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. At <laughs> so, the time. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah. So then I uh, came down here and um, went got, to got school. With school yeah, back then it was a two year yeah. school. Okay. Um, then I had a scholarship to go back up to the U, mm. and didn't really want to, so didn't want to really Put be you up back there. In town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then ended up meeting my husband. And um, now was he Mormon? No, he was raised atheist. Surprisingly, oh. Oh. in St. George. <laughs> oh, it was in St. George. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> God had brought these two atheists <laughs> together, but we didn't realize that. And um, so yeah, we we. Um, so we met, and then um, this part of my story is that he got me pregnant three weeks after we met. Wow. And um, I ended up getting an abortion. Mm. Um, he wanted to keep the baby, but I, to me, that was my way of just showing God that I hated him. Oh. Because I guess in a way I kind of did believe in God, and I wanted to hurt him. <laughs> So my husband was just begging me. We weren't married, but he was begging me, please, let's keep this baby. And I said, absolutely oh. not. I'm going to so, show God. <laughs> yep. So I did. I got the abortion. Oh, gee. And then we got married, and we had two beautiful girls. And, oh, great. And um, still atheist. And, and everything still here in mm -hmm. St. George. Yeah, here okay. in St. George. Yeah. And um, everything was fine. We're, everything was just, you know, kind of chill, you yeah. know. And then my husband ended up getting some pretty bad depression mm. and couldn't work. Yeah. So I went back to school to get my degree just in case he would talk about suicide every single day. Oh. And um, so I went back to school. And so I had been homeschooling my girls. But when I went back to school, I thought, well, I'll put them in a private school. Mm. So I called around and the, the least expensive school happened to be Trinity Lutheran. <laughs> so I thought, well, this is sneaky. We're going to put our two kids in this yeah, Trinity parochial. We're, yeah. we're atheists. And <laughs> yep. Yeah, we felt pretty sneaky about that. So they went to school there while I finished up my degree. Yeah. And while there, my youngest daughter met a little friend, and his mom and I became friends. Okay. And so, um, Anyway, so the girls, there were a lot of kids at that school that went to this Christian camp that one of the local churches here has in the summertime. Okay. So they ended up going up to that camp, and 
one of the camp counselors called me when they got back and she was just kind of reviewing what they had done that week and all that. And then she says, your girls both got saved. And I'm like, <laughs> saved from what? <laughs> like, what are you I didn't talking? No, they were in trouble. <laughs> were there bears up there? Like, I had no idea. And what so, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, so then she explained it to me, and I just thought, oh, I don't know if I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, and so I've got that. I've got my husband still kind of working out some things, yeah. and I'm finishing up school, and I got a really, really good job. And I thought, well, I'm going to be the breadwinner probably. <laughs> and yeah. so. That our life, there was just a lot of chaos, like some good chaos, but there was just a lot of stuff going on. And um, so my husband um, had gotten so far down that he had a Christian friend that would always try to talk to him about Jesus. And, really? mm -hmm, and my husband would just laugh and <laughs> make fun and just, He's you know. He's depressed. He's an atheist. Yeah, He's just not ready for no. anything. <laughs> So he ended up um, calling his friend one yeah. day, and he said, look, I really need someone oh, to talk to Oh, your husband called the friend? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because he knew he yeah. could turn to him yeah. and get some, maybe some help yeah. or something. So he called him, and um, so the friend led him to the Lord. And so now I've got my husband and my two <laughs> girls. Saved, <laughs> yep. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime, the little boy that was friends with my daughter, his mom, yeah. Her name's Leanne, a dear, beautiful person. She started coming to my work every single day during my lunch break. She wanted to do a little Bible study. And I was like, oh gosh, I'll play your little game. Now, who was she again? Her Did name's Leanne. That? Was she a friend? She's Just a, the mom of the, mom of the, the little of boy. The little, okay. Yeah. So every day she would come and start talking to do this to little, you. yeah, and I'm like, okay, you know, I, I wanted a friend, so yeah. <laughs> I would play her little game and let her do her little Bible story and all this, and I was just, I was almost feeling like something's happening and I don't, I don't know, like, not that I'm a control freak, yeah. but just like, what's happening, right. you know, and my kids are wanting to go to church and my husband's like, we need to go to church, and I'm just... Was he going to church now? He had started going by himself. With his friend? With, oh, uh -huh. with yeah, the, yeah, with yeah. the friend, yeah. yeah. And so it was just, my life was just like, ugh. So this had been going on for probably six months. This gal had been coming every single day. Has been going to church, kids <laughs> yep. day. And I'm like, ugh. So anyway, so this one day, um, this one evening, Leanne had called. And she says, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? And I was like, no. And she says, why not? And I'm like, why are you even calling me? I see you every day. <laughs> you don't need to call me. <laughs> and she says, I want to know why you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I hadn't told anyone. I couldn't. I couldn't. And she says, you need to tell me right now. And I said, well, I had an abortion, and God can't, can't forgive me. <laughs> and she said to me, the most godly woman that I knew at that time, and she said to me, girlfriend, welcome to the club. <laughs> and I'm like, what does that no mean? <laughs> she had one too. She had had an abortion. And she said, you need to get... And she explained what yep. Jesus had done for you. And she did. She says, get down on your knees right now and ask him. To forgive you. Yep. So I did. So. Wow. <laughs> so I really have three kids. <laughs> so did you feel like that was your born again moment? It uh, was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I just, I, the moment I prayed and asked God to just forgive me for that, as well as, you know, all my other sins. <laughs> I just, um, I felt that that newness yeah. that I had never, ever experienced. had. Yeah. Yep. I think there's that lack of understanding with Mormons that, that they can, that Jesus has paid for our sins mm -hmm. and that we can be f totally forgiven because of what he's done, not because yeah. of what we do. Yeah. And some sure. sins are different than others, but, oh. Uh, what a terrific story. 
gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, so you've been, and then you started going to church then? Uh, and what, yeah. What did you think the first time you went to, I to felt, the Christian church? I felt so clean. Did you? Like I knew I had a lot to learn, and I was trying to learn the, the prayer lingo, you know, like yeah. all that little stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a little. And, you yeah. know, I just wanted to fit in so bad, like immediately. I was just, yeah. I would just grasp everything, and every time the church was open, I was there. You know, I was just... Like, I need to learn this, I need to soak it, I need to like, yeah. I, I'm, you know, h however old I was, like, I've wasted all this time, and I, I just, I was just falling in love with Jesus, and I just, I couldn't, I didn't ever want that separation, like, I wanted yeah. that feeling every single day, and I still do, obviously, Yeah. but I just, I could not believe that He would forgive me for that. And I just was like, oh, I am yours. <laughs> did you ever sense, uh, how did you sense Jesus as a Mormon? I was always scared. Yeah. Just like, I'll never be good enough. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll probably make it to like that little telestial kingdom like, or whatever, yeah, and I'll be happy. The low one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, at least that's heaven. It's got to be better than earth, you yeah, know? <laughs> right, that's what we're told. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, you know, like the Burger King crown was like what I was like looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, that'll be good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> the paper one or yeah. something. <laughs> Isn't there such a freedom though now and, and trusting in who this wonderful Jesus is yeah. for us? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just, I I really do. I, I, I just, I love to pray. I'm such a prayer warrior. Like I'm usually a pretty quiet person, yeah. but um, you can, tell me if you need prayer, like I'm instantly on my right knees. I, I love to pray for people. I love yeah. to just hear people's stories. I love, like, if people want me to share my story, I will, but I totally love to hear other people's stories and just that moment, yeah. you know, it's just. <sighs> there is that moment. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's what I was thinking as you were beginning your story tonight, today, uh, and sharing that really sad tale I just knew sitting here, because I, I know what we're doing here, that there's a joyful end to this message and that you've got a, a wonderful well, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's what happened to me. Yeah. 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 And such a, such a wonderful feeling. So the Bible means a little bit different now, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. To you? <laughs> I mean, I crave the Bible. And, and that's the other thing, too. Like, when I was a little kid, I just had so many questions. And I'm like, well, if the Bible isn't translated correctly, then how, so who has right. the real one? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why, why haven't we gotten it yet? And yeah. if God gave us the Book of Mormon, why can't He give us the correct translation of the Bible? Or, you know, like... That's a good point. I would just, yeah, I'd have all these questions. And, and like the temple, because my dad was a temple worker, my grandma and grandpa were both temple workers, and, and I just was like, how can they go to the temple and then how can he do that to me and my girlfriends? And so he was know, working in the temple. Yeah, he was a weekly at temple that time. worker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, there's a lot of hypocrisy that goes on. Well, for everybody, because even if it's not that sin, it's another sin. Mm -hmm. And yet you're sitting there telling the bishop every other year now, I guess, that uh, you're worthy to go to the temple. Mm. Because, but you're never mm. worthy <laughs> to do that. Well, yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I started to understand that. I started yeah. to understand that we all sin and we're not worthy, none of us. Right. But then on the other hand, I'm told that God lives in the temple. And I'm like, well, I know. Yeah. how can he go there Walks if God's the halls there? halls of the temple. And, yeah, I just, yeah. and then we, I, when I was a teenager, we did the baptisms for the dead. Oh, yeah. And I remember they came and they kind of coached us on what was going to happen. and. Um, we were told that um, it was a very, very important day for those spirits. Right. And so I think we were given like 50 names and they would dunk us, come back up, dunk us, come oh, back yeah. up. Just over and over. Yeah, and our teacher had told us that those spirits were going to be there in the room because that was very important. And so they had told us if you're yeah, able to, yeah, yeah, and you'd be able to see them. You know, and so I'm, I'm coming up out of the water, and I'm trying to find you're the spirit, <laughs> and I'm getting dunked again, and and then and if <laughs> you don't see him, it's because you're not worthy. That's what something. I started thinking. Yeah, I yeah. was like, oh, here we go again. It's, oh, <laughs> Where are I you? I messed up all these fifty people. <laughs> oh, it's just now bad. the baptism doesn't count. Or I know. Something. I felt. I, carried that. I felt that a few times. Yeah. 
what do you, I mean, you, you, you understand grace now. Did you ever understand even that concept at all as a, as a Latter-day Saint? No. Because it's all about works, isn't it? About what we mm -hmm. do and what we can do. Yeah, you have yeah. to do this, you have to do that. You have to think these thoughts. You can't think those thoughts, yeah. you know. And, and then we were extra strict in our family. We had to wear dresses all day long on Sunday. We couldn't watch couldn't TV. Couldn't play or do anything, yeah. And, yeah. and some of my friends were in more liberal households. You know, they could do homework on Sunday or whatever. Right. We weren't allowed to do any of that. And so we were like the perfect family on the outside. Oh boy. And then, very proud. Very, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, just have you been able to forgive and and feel mm -hmm. feel good about things in life? I do. I forgive. I've yeah. forgiven my father and my the people that were involved, my family. Um, I do forgive them. I will admit that I haven't had a relationship with my father. Yeah. Um, just That's because I couldn't. Yeah. But I did forgive him. Oh, and, so. and have that burden carried mm -hmm. taken off. Mm -hmm. and yeah, because for me the moment was when somebody said to me, how can you expect Jesus to forgive your sin if you can't forgive his yeah. sin? Well, it's a beautiful thought, and yeah. he's done that for us. And of we, course. We owe him everything, so. <laughs> yeah. Prayer's a little different nowadays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love praying. So I how just, long has this been? Um, we'll get back to prayer in a second. Oh, that's okay. How long has this been for you? This, this, oh, what, since I got saved? Yeah, when um, was that? 15 years. Ago. We're coming up on 15 years. Oh. No, 2000, December of 2002. Yeah, that's so. 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. So yeah. prayer means prayer. More. I love to pray. You said the prayer warrior that you I are. Do. And, I do. I, yeah. I just, I, I just, I love talking to God. I just, I'm not scared anymore. And you I'm feel not, like you are talking to yeah, your, your I am. Father. I'm not afraid like of messing up or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, gosh, Misty, guess what? We're almost out of time. Oh, okay. Just a minute or so left. Anything you want to say to? family or friends? I think that God puts it in your heart to know truth and I would just pray that people don't dismiss that. Like if you question something, please investigate. Please don't please just don't put it away. Yeah, yeah. And and just be like, oh uh, right. sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like God is trying to communicate with his people like he yeah. obviously he wants and us he to come to him. Us, doesn't yeah. he? he wants us to come to him and understand what he did for us mm -hmm. and yeah. I think that message is in the Bible yep. not uh, <laughs> gospel of Joseph Smith and the <laughs> gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. so thanks for joining thanks right. for joining us and thank you Misty we'll You're see welcome. you next time <laughs>